Hey, welcome back to Fat Mama Physics. In this video, we are on to Unit 2, Power and Exponent Laws. This first section, what is a power? Essentially looking at exponential growth or just the idea of exponents, I kind of wanted to uh, introduce this unit with um, a little bit of the concept of what an exponent does. So imagine you... Now I'm going to talk about, say, um, a spread of disease because this is re this is very applicable in in such cases, and especially now during tough times. So, if you if we try to model exponential growth, it's not every single day or every amount of iteration of or every second, every specified amount of time. Let's say one day. After one day, it's not like. Uh, the amount of people that say are infected, and I'm thinking a zombie apocalypse, but it's not, the rate of growth is not, is not the same. For example, a consistent rate of growth means after one day, you increase a certain amount of, you increase the cases, you increase the number of infections for a steady, for a certain amount. The next day you get the same amount. The next day you get a same, uh, the same amount. So that's a steady rate of increase. And that's not how exponentials work. On the other hand, exponentials, as you can hear from the word itself, it goes up quite quickly. What that means is every day you get some number of people and then the next day you get even more people that are infected or, um, or new cases. So, and if you think about the spread of anything, it's like a rumor in a room. It's after you spread it to one person, that's, that person spreads it to two other people, and those two, oh, those two other people spread it to two other people. Kind of like how disease spread, how do we model disease. So exponential growth is very, uh, it's very scary, actually. It's, um, it, if there is no limit to the growth, it will just keep growing forever and at an ever-increasing rapid uh ever increasing rate so just to show this i have a game i have over here of course just like any intro to um just like any intro to a uh, lesson i do feature a board game i will try to keep this short <laughs> okay so here we go so turning over to my ca uh, my my phone camera so this game here is actually out of print so let me move this camera a little bit uh, better here and somehow this light just got turned on so this game is out of print um, the name that you would have to find online it would be Bandu so B-A-N-D-U uh, the old version that is out of print it's called Bausack B-A-U-S-A-C-K and what this you might be wondering is this actually a board game it's not quite a board game um, but it is indeed a very and a very fun one. So let's uh, reorient this a bit. Okay, so it looks like a sack of pieces. Okay, so um, immediately you notice of uh, different kinds of pieces we have over here. We have red pieces, we have white pieces, and the white pieces seem to be pretty straightforward. Although there are some um, unique shapes, and uh, of course this one, you notice it's not actually a perfect cylinder because the bottom is cut at an angle, and um, just all these different sorts of pieces. Immediately you also might notice that the white pieces look more um, standard kind of shape compared to the red ones. Uh, yes, that's to signify level difficulty and, um, and complexity of the shape. So let's show you some what are the red ones might look like, some very interesting ones. So uh, so here you can see there's a little tip and the base is flat, so that's very helpful. Uh, here, same thing. Actually, that's not very interesting. Uh, this one's very interesting. This one is kind of like a cut-out cylinder in a weird shape, if you think of it that way. Um, this is a, actually a, a ball which has a hole and it's got a base that is slightly flat on the bottom, also very helpful. So you got some other unique shapes here, and then that looks like a bowling pin, some eggs. I feel like we might have even lost a few pieces. That's not that good because my son likes to play with these and 
I don't know. Hopefully nothing lost. Okay, so here's the idea of the game. Um, there's many versions, but the version that I enjoy the most is where you have a group of people who come together and um, they play. They we basically get one turn. We pick a block and then we stack it on top of the base so whatever is in the construction works already and whatever new piece you put on you have to use one hand to uh, to do it without moving any of the other pieces um, you and if you do of course then the person and of course you lose the game and the person who set you up which is the previous person in a turn order, wins. And uh, they get a little token of uh, to show that they scored that point. Oh, that shouldn't be here. So that's kind of the, that's the uh, idea. And we're very brutal. Actually, uh, at least I am. And that usually triggers a um, kind of moving forward. So first player to start the start this round usually has to begin with a white piece. So if I'm nice, I would do that. If I'm a mean, I might do that as a starting piece. Now, yes, you might think that, oh, if uh, the thing is rolling around, so does that make the other person lose? No, I mean, due to natural consequences, things will move, but at the end, you, you do want to um, move uh, things. So let's say that was the opening move that I had, and then the next person goes, then the next person that goes can use a red piece, can use a white piece. But of course, you want to make it hard enough so that that the next person is going to screw it up, essentially. So maybe this next person, um, maybe let's say this person's a little nicer, okay? So this person may use, let's say, a big cylinder and try to stabilize this thing in the middle, but of course, using one hand only, um, to do that, so they might do that, and it's okay if that thing moves, as long as it doesn't topple over and that person's hand does not touch anything, so even if they did that and moved, it's fine, okay? So now there's some stability, okay? And um, of course, let's say the other person is meaner, and then they might do something like, um, that's actually not that mean, because they can build something down here. Um, and oh yes, you're allowed to use your hand to kind of move things like that. You're allowed to do that to the structure. So if they they might do this and add some instability to this. Oh, and that's okay. If it's due to natural uh, movement and not due to the person, that's okay. Especially with rolling. Um, but the idea is now that I've, now that this person has added the piece on the bottom, notice that this uh, that putting on a piece without making a fall becomes ever increasingly more difficult, and it's not just because that uh, you have more it's taller, but this red piece interacts with this white piece, and this white piece interacts with this piece through a means of different modes of forces being involved. And as a result, the, um, the person who goes next, their job becomes increasingly more difficult. So the difficulty goes up exponentially because there's more interaction between the, the more pieces is essentially what this idea is. So let's see if I can put on one more piece without this top lane. I'm usually quite, I, I usually, I'm usually quite good at this game. Um, we do this in our physics unit for, um, forces and... Uh, what happens is um, if anyone can beat me, which is very rare, then um, <laughs> they get more credit for that unit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it requires a bit of thinking, um, a strategic planning, and as well as dexterity. So I could do this. This is not very mean. Um, <laughs> something heavier would be meaner if I could pull it off, which is pretty difficult. So if I'm really mean, I can try to put this on this side. But let's see. I might fail. And of course, I don't want to make this video go on forever, so let's just just get it over with. Oh, see, notice that. Went, okay, so if that were the case, then the this person will lose the game. So I just made myself lose. Ha 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 ha. Okay, that was fun while it lasted. Anyways, so there you go. Increasing level of difficulty. It's not that it goes up linearly. It goes up more. It, the rate of increase increases. The uh, uh, every turn. Okay. So that's the idea of exponential growth. So thank you for watching. I'm going to turn this one off.
Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too long. Let's get back to the lesson. So, um, I am going to maybe break this video into two parts, okay? So now that you've kind of had a sense of what exponential growth is, um, let's take a look at what that actually looks like in terms of all the components of a power. So here we have a basic structure here. You see here in green, this whole thing is called a power. And uh, we have this five here. We call that the base. This little three here we call the exponent and whole thing we call a power. Please be, uh, please know this, um, please know the terminology well because I will use these three words when I'm describing, um, I'm, when I'm delivering a lesson. So. Sometimes in, in a sentence, I might say, oh, this is 5 to the power of 3, um, even though 3 is the exponent, okay? Okay, so that is kind of how that goes. Actually, I'll write it down, just in case people might be, might like that. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> so, what does that mean? If I have 5 to the power of 3, this means that... Five is the number that I am going to write down. I'm not actually going to write the, th the number three down. A three tells me how many times a five has to multiply itself by. So five has to multiply itself by three. So I have five times five times five. There are three fives. One, two, three fives are, are, that are multiplying itself. And that's going to give us 125. So sometimes you have some, um, there's some phones or some calculators on phones or computers. They don't have the power symbol. If you understand what a power is, you can just brute force go five times five times five times five. How many times I say five? Three. I, okay. So that is the idea of what an, a power means. So unlike multiplication, that would be five plus five plus five plus five. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. This is 5 times, oopsie, I should write 5 in front, 5 times 3. Okay, so this is not the same as 5 to the power of 3. So be very careful of that difference. Okay, I'm actually going to write a bubble this in red so people just remember that. Okay, there you go. Okay, so now that you kind of have an idea what x, but what a power is, it's a... Uh, it's scary. It's as if every time I multiply by another five, my power, my um, number just becomes even more and more. Because if you compare this, this is five times five to the power of one. That's just one five. Five to the power of two is two fives. Two, five times five is twenty five. And then five to the power of three is one twenty five. And then five to the power of four, which is five, one more five, essentially is 125 times five, that's 625. So notice exponential growth, it looks quite scary. Imagine money went up that way. <laughs> okay, let's, let's take a look at a few examples. So at the end of this video, I am just going to have finished this box here. Okay, next video, I'll talk about some nuances. First example is done for us, and it's 5 to the power of 2, with base 5, exponent 2, and that is 5 times 5 equals 25. So repeated multiplication is showing your work, standard form is the final answer. Next one, we have 125, which we it is shown here in our first example. So we just go ahead and fill this out. This is 5 to the power of 3 with a base of 5 and exponent of 3. So if I want to write this as a multiplication sentence, this is 5 times itself 3 times, just like the above. And putting that into the calculator would be 125 if you haven't memorized. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't have to memorize it. Okay, next up is 3 to the power of 6. The pace here is the bigger number on the bottom, 3, and the exponent here is 6, meaning I'm going to take the 3 and I'm going to multiply 3 6 times, or have 6 3s in the multiplication sentence. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, okay? So putting that into your calculator, if I remember correctly, that's 243, we could just double check. Uh, oh, while we're at it, maybe it's a good opportunity for me to give you kind of a, a little lesson on how to use your calculator. <laughs> okay, so here I just changed my computer um, calculator function to the scientific form. Uh, perfect. Okay, so most of your calculators will look like this. 
Um, I don't think many of you, if any, have a graphing calculator, so I won't use that for the purpose of this demo. <clears throat> if I want to put this in my calculator, I press through uh, the the in the button you want to notice is this one here, x to the power of four. Okay, so x is a base, y is the exponent. So how we do this is if I want three to the power six, I press three, I press this button. And notice it gives me that little hat. The little hat means to the power of, okay? And I'm gonna press six. So three to the power of six, I press enter and, hmm, three to the power of six. Oh, whoopsies, 729. Huh, I totally, was totally off. Oh, three to the power of five was 243. Okay, that's why. So yes, three to the power of six is, 729. You put that here for your standard form, and there you go. Many of you might be aware of this button here, squared, and that's only limited to square, the, the square of a number. So just be mindful, it's not this one, it's this one x to the power of x, okay? Okay, so let's do the next one, and this number here we have is 7, okay? So what that looks like is, ooh, you might be thinking, well, what times what is going to give me 7? Or what time is itself is going to give me 7? Don't forget, let's take a look at the side example here. 5 to the power, so this 5 is 5 to the power 1, this is 5 to the power 2, this is 5 to the power 3, and etc. So... To get the original number by itself, you just need the power to one because something not multiplying anything else and it's just itself will just be that number itself. So this is seven to the power of one with a base of seven and exponent of one. And if I write this out, it's just seven. So there you go. That's how you would get a standard form without uh, of the number itself without needing to multiply itself again. Okay, next up we have this here, eight times eight times eight times eight times eight. We know the, pa the base must be eight because that's the number that we see. And then the number of times it shows up is our exponent, one, two, three, four, five. So if I have to write this as a power, this is eight to the power, oopsies. That is eight to the power of five. And putting this in our calculator, we are gonna do that again. Remember, it is 8 as the base, and then xy to the power of 5 is our exponent equals, that is a huge number, 3, 2, 7, 6, 8. All right, so that's it. So I'm going to conclude my video here, and then the rest of this video, the next part 2, will feature the rest of this sheet. So that is 2.1. I thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Good luck, Fat Mama Physics, signing out.